Hi there, welcome to my studio. My name is Matthew Palmer and welcome to this 10 minute watercolour masterclass. Let's get started. So we're all ready to go here. We've got a sheet of watercolour paper. This is around about a quarter imperial in size, which is about 11 by 15 inch. Now watercolour paper has got a special textured surface to allow the paint to flow nicely. So it's important that you do use a watercolour paper. This particular one is called Matthew Palmer watercolour paper. We have uh, a Matthew Palmer Easy Clean watercolour palette. We've got the colours squirted in, but it might seem as though there's a lot of colours, but you know, we're only going to use three. And those three are a bright yellow. Here we've got natural yellow light. We've got natural red, <clears throat> which is like a crimson kind of red. And we've got a beautiful natural blue. So three primary colours, three brushes too. What we have here is a large brush. This one is a size 12 round. We've got a size 6 round and a size 2. Three round watercolour brushes. I'm just going to move that to one side for the second. We've got the water. We've also got some kitchen paper here. What I want to do is paint a wintry landscape. A big thank you to today's video sponsor which is connectfiber.co.uk. Make sure you check out the link below for a £60 credit. Yes, the link below will take you to the website where you can get £60 credits against your broadband. Amazing, eh? It really, really helps this channel too. Have a look or check them out at connectfiber.co.uk. If you're looking for a broadband provider who offers both speed and reliability, look no further than Connect Fiber, a leading provider of full fiber broadband who specialise in faster, fairer and flawless internet connections. Unlike some providers who are raising their prices by as much as 7.9% in April, Connect Fiber don't do annual price hikes and never raise the price in contract. Order one of their packages before the 1st of April to make sure you get an amazing price for the duration of your contract. With Connect Fiber, there are four great packages to choose from. If you're after the ultimate in hyper-fast broadband, the one that I use for doing these live streams and for uploading, it is a life-changing package. The hypersonic package it's called, and it gives you up to 1,000 megabits per second. It is superb. I recommend it to anybody. And it's all at an affordable price as well, ensuring streamless streaming and ultra-fast upload and download speeds. There's also Connect Fiber TV service, which can be added to the hypersonic package. The TV features hours of video on-demand streaming services, as well as TV, this phone and mesh service too, spreading the internet throughout your property. The service is currently available in my hometown of Bolsover and other parts of Derbyshire, Cambridgeshire, Essex, Nottinghamshire and Yorkshire, of course, here in the UK. Connect Fiber, faster, fairer and flawless internet. Check out their website, connectfiber.co.uk for availability in your area and for more information. And do make sure you click the link below in the description for this video because it will give you £60 credit and really help this channel. Big thumbs up and a big thank you to Connect Fiber. Let's crack on. And for this, I'm going to take a piece of masking tape that's long enough to go across the paper. Now I want to work in the centre here it almost in the style of a vignette. Now I want to go up and curve over to make a hill. And then we're going to go back up a little bit on that side. So we can sort of kink the paper. And that's the area where the painting will be. So it'll be a nice, beautiful, faded edge. Using the water, I'm literally going to wet down to that area. So a nice, simple, straightforward thing to do. Put the brushes to one side there. So, very straightforward. Wet the paper. And let's paint in the sky. So, primary colours, very straightforward thing to do. Let's use some of the red. Red's a strong colour. This one's called natural red. So, a little bit goes a long way. Lots of water. A good tip is to wipe off the excess on the side of your palette as well. I'm going to bring this red in. Down to the masking tape there. And then we'll go straight in and take some of the blue and add this to the red. It'll make a slight purple, of course. And I'll bring that across from the top, allowing the paint to all nicely mix and blend and become part of the picture. Look at those gorgeous colours already in that sky. Let's make that a little bit darker. Let's actually add a little bit of yellow to this. And what yellow will do in that purple is it'll turn the colour into an ever so slight grey. So it's the blue, the red, and the touch of the yellow, and you start to see a bit of a grey appear. Now that grey is beautiful for creating um, shadows. It's the perfect, perfect shadow colour. A gentle wipe on the side here. So 
that little tap on the tissue is important and we can now twist in notice the twist action here to create some clouds what i will say is practice this technique with the clouds a little bit because it can take a little bit of practice this is the large brush this one is the size 12. Um, the sky works without clouds so don't worry too much if you don't manage to get them but just a gentle twist and then a few horizontals and then down here in this dip what we're going to do here is paint in some tall lines now this will represent some distant trees now the thing is the paper is still damp at this point so allow the paint to flow let it continue to blend in let those edges bleed away if you find that the clouds are blending too much or even if it's too dry clean that brush really well in the water squeeze it through some kitchen paper and almost make the brush go flat and you can just ever so gently stroke the bottom <laughs> that sounds interesting along the base sorry along the base of the clouds and you can see you can remove some of the color it's quite nice to do this and it kind of helps to blend in these trees here i want to pick up this size six brush which is um, about half the size of course and if we just bring the palette over here we can see we've still got that gray i want to make the gray a little bit stronger so what we'll do is we'll take the blue so more blue more red get purple mix a purple first and then add the yellow to that and it'll make the color much stronger but still very much a gray and that is so important gray it might seem like a bit of a dull color but gray honestly is a very important color and what we'll do here is i'll work over the top of these trees notice that color is just that little bit stronger still again dabbing on that tissue it always makes perfect sense and you can almost create these sort of misty this sort of misty area almost like distant pine trees with this paintbrush beautiful so I'm not going to paint over all those areas just over a few of them get some little spots at the top get some individual flyaway areas almost like literally sort of branching out at this point if you know what I mean over this side as well beautiful make sure it's nice and nice and strong at the base always makes the pictures work well so as it starts to dry keep adding more and more of this but you're creating a very misty atmospheric area beautiful now at that stage i'm happy to leave that to dry i've got all the color i need in there um, but before I dry it off, I'm just going to slightly remove the masking tape now very carefully peel it away There's a chance that paint can seep down the back of this if it does just lower the tape a touch below it And then repaint the trees over the top that'll hide the seepage But that's given me the sky and this hill in the foreground What I want to do now is give that a good dry and I'll just use a hairdryer for this and come back to it in a second so that's all nice and dry and what we'll do now is we'll start to work in the foreground and bring in these beautiful shadows as far as colors are concerned we've pretty much already been dealing with the colors that we need here so back to the big brush this one is that that large 12 brush again and i just want to mix up a purple again but i'll put the water in there first to get this color nice and diluted the blue with a touch of red will give you a nice purple very similar to the color that we just used in the sky Pop that to one side, bring this back over. Now what we'll do is work on the landscape. Always have that piece of kitchen paper because it's good just to wipe off that excess colour. Where the hill drops and goes across, almost continue that line and then start to wiggle. Practice this one again around the corner. Clean that brush really well. Give it a couple of runs over the tissue. No more because you need water on the brush. And then just soften, blend, move that colour get it working away towards that right hand side of the paper keep cleaning the brush keep giving it a couple of taps until it pretty much fades away notice the sort of vignette effect that we get in here i love that the soft faded edge now i'm just pulling a few lines up here with that damp brush as well it starts to help to create an illusion of a footpath or a roadway or a trackway or something just going around the corner keep cleaning that brush keep giving it a couple of taps on the tissue pick up some more of that color 
we'll go along the top of the hill and we'll come down here one two again remember that one get that get that brush move that paint down let it all fade away again a lovely fade a lovely feather beautiful now again that just wants a few moments to dry and then we'll come back and do all those wonderful beautiful finishing touches but already we can see we've got a gorgeous sky and a hillside let's add a little bit of detail nice and dry we've got the six brush here bring the palette over this time we're going to make we've still got the gray we can use that but we're going to make a brown from those three colors what we'll do is we'll mix a a thick orange from yellow and of course the red put plenty of red in this one get the color really going to an orange and then just add a little bit of the blue to this and that will start to make the color go towards a brown if you kept adding the uh, blue it would go more of a gray pop that to one side bring this back in place now what we're going to do here is use something what we call a dry brush now a dry brush is very simply the opposite of having lots of paint on so you pick the paint up you wipe it off you wipe it off and it gives you dry effect you can even pinch the bristle so it goes a little bit spiky and makes this nice random spiky edge and we can use this to lightly skim along the edge of this footpath just to give us some detail and you can bring little bits of this coming up into the hillside as well almost imagine those little bits of earth poking through that kind of thing and we can even start to make little sort of trackways within the snow imagine where there's been a vehicle or something going around there and sort of skidding and you know agitating up all the snow there notice the change in direction that i'm doing here with this color but i'm really utilizing almost the side of the brush and the texture of the paper now in the palette of course we've also got this gray here that we mixed so as well as just doing the brown you can also dry the brush off make your brush go a little bit flat and just add a little bit of gray to this because what that'll do is just give a little bit extra texture and a nice variation in color because all all the brown would be a little bit too dull so little bits of this just weaving up even a few bits coming down here as well keep pinching that brush and just add a nice bit of texture make the use make use of the the green this particular watercolor paper what i'm using here is called the knot surface which means it's not rough and it's not smooth and that's basically what it is all about now it's also worth picking up some of that brown that little tap on the tissue and just popping in some little spots around here just to represent a little bit of foliage a little bit of and don't forget you've also got that smaller brush the number two brush as well if you need something a bit finer grab that brush and you can just do little little extra little bits of extra detail alternate between the gray and the brown even think about painting in some little little sort of branches poking out of the snow little twigs little bits of winter foliage again a few spots on the tops of these would actually go down quite nice on this picture really spend that little bit of time on that edge especially where it comes and sort of drops off the bottom of the painting you can really go to town put some grasses poking out the snow i'm quite a fan of that especially in this foreground it's nice to see some some little bits of grasses coming out here pop a few on that side as well it's your picture you can do whatever you please with this detail but for me personally that's almost about right and if i just quickly grab some of the purple the violet that we mixed here on that small brush i'm just going to pop in some shadows from these grasses and these twigs and that just helps it all to stand up and it also indicates where the light is shining from which is always an important thing of course and just makes them look as though the light's streaming in here beautiful and just literally just to finish off this picture folks you're using that same violet but with the number six brush 
I just feel like I could add a few little shadows. And of course, you can take the techniques learnt in this 10 minute masterclass and apply these to larger, more detailed paintings. And of course, we have lots and lots of tuition on my website, which is watercolour, all the W's, watercolour.tv. Check it out, folks. And these are the little bits that really make the painting come alive. It's actually quite addictive. Just putting little spots of grasses on, poking out the snow, and little bits of little bits of detail makes all the difference. And that makes a wonderful finished watercolour painting. So thank you for joining me for this 10 minute watercolour masterclass. My name is Matthew Palmer and I'll see you very soon for more watercolour painting.